the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can we sing it one more time? We lift our hearts. Come on, let me hear you. I will be 
Let me hear you. I will be still, oh God. I will be still. No will. Oh God, I will be still. I will be still. No will. Oh God. Praise the Lord, and thank you for joining us once again on the various digital platforms. And to those of you in Ghana, thanks for joining us on National TV GTV. I pray that to each one of you, grace and peace will be multiplied to you. I also pray that the broadcast today will be a blessing to you at this time of a challenge and need. We are broadcasting from home, and today and coming weeks till the lockdown ban is lifted, all our broadcasts will be done from here. The mass, this is the church's mass. And we are doing this in honor and also in respect and in obedience to directives, to the directives by our government here in the United Kingdom and also in Ghana that we should stay at home so that the coronavirus will be contained. And as you stay at home, I want you to remember that not only is it an act of obedience, but always remember at the back of your mind the quote by the President of Ghana, which has received international acclaim. And I quote him. He said, we know how to bring the economy back to life. What? we did not know is how to bring people back to life. We know how to bring the economy back to life, but what we did not know is how to bring people back to life. Very powerful uh, uh, statement. Uh, and uh, you and I will understand that the times that we are living in are challenging times. Times that are difficult, and as such, this morning, join me as we look into the ancient words preserved for our need and for our sake in this life. John's Gospel, chapter 14, I begin reading from verse 15. Jesus speaks and says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. The King James says, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come back to you, says the Lord, I believe you will agree with me that if there is any time and age in which we need the comfort that comes from God, it is at this time. Simeon, who it had been declared that he would never taste death till he saw the birth of Jesus Christ, held Jesus in the temple and declared, Simeon was known as the consolation of Israel. He holds Jesus in his hands. And in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 32, he looks at the baby Jesus and says, A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. Zachariah, when he was high priest in his time, when his mouth was opened after the birth of John and he began, to speak, prophesied, and said, Through the tender mercies of our God, the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sat under the shadow of darkness and under the shadow of death, and to order our steps to walk in peace. The King James Version says, He made a declaration that Jesus 
is the day spring from on high. And Simeon says that he is the light to lighten the Gentiles. The evangelist John in John's gospel, chapter one and verse four says, in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. Jesus himself, the light of the world, the ancient of days saw through the darkness of the centuries that were ahead and were to come uh, uh, before his people and said in Matthew's Gospel 24, 6 and 7 that, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass by the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. The world has experienced too many wars. And as I stand here, we all know that the world has already experienced two major world wars. But Jesus, in the verse 6 of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, says, You will hear of wars, and not only wars, but also of rumors of war, rumors. And, and the word rumor, uh, uh, the Oxford Dictionary says that it is a currently circulating story or report of uncertain or doubtful truth. Let me put it simply. A rumor is a circulating report of uncertain, doubtful truth. In other words, truth that seems to be appear uh, Truth that seems to be real, but is doubtful. And you will agree with me that with the current coronavirus pandemic, we are hearing of different strange theories, strange rumors. Some are saying, Jesus says we'll hear of rumors of war. Some are saying it is an economic war between a, a powerful emerging economy that seeks to take over the economies of the world and therefore to cripple the economies of the West. Others are saying that it is a digital warfare for supremacy over the digital age. And some are even blaming the 5G technology as the main cause of this pandemic. Jesus in Luke 21 verse 26 says that men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of these, these things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken. 2 Timothy 1 7, the Bible Paul makes it quite clear that God has not given to us the spirit of fear. In other words, what he's saying is that God has not given that to you. The very fabric of everything we believed in has been shaken, just as Jesus said that the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The world economies have been shaken. Political and military powers have been shaken, and they could not stand the coronavirus. Corridors of power have been shaken. This virus has no respect for the mighty and the weak. It has no respect for any corridor of power. It has invaded all sources of power. It attacks the old, it attacks the young, it attacks the male, it attacks the female, it attacks the black, it attacks the white. So in short, you and I have to know that we are in a war. Our liberties have been taken away from us. And many of you will agree with me that for many, the clothes they have stacked in their wardrobes to show up, you are no longer able to wear it. Where are you wearing them to go? The big congregations we have have been shaken. And you can see we are broadcasting from home, but we still want you to look at the church and to see that it is empty, empty pews. Churches that were boasting of congregations of 35,000, 40,000, 10,000, 50, all are empty now. But thank God that the pews may be empty 
uh, the church building is empty, but you are the church because you are the house of the living God. You see, the worst the coronavirus can do is to take people's lives away. And I pray that from today, may all death cease in the name of Jesus. But there is only one who has authority over death and also over our souls. And he is the one that we must know. Our nation is sat war. And for our own good, the lockdown is to our advantage. The truth is that people are looking for answers. People are stressed and too many are depressed. The answer is Jesus Christ, who saw this day coming and promised us in his word and said that I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter, another paraclete, says the Greek word. The King James Version says here that I will send you, I will pray to the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. You see, the root meaning of the word paraclete is someone who stands by us in a courtroom when a defendant is hard pressed by a prosecutor and needs a lawyer. So he stands up, he shows up, the, the paraclete, the comforter shows up uh, as, an, uh, uh, as a lawyer uh, and as various accusations are being held on us. Uh, and you know that there are those who are saying that it is God judging the world. It is only because too many believers have not lived their lives rightly. Others are saying it is because of the way that the Western world has oppressed blacks. That people, so many theories. But as the devil uses and, and, and held such accusations against us. The comforter, the helper, our counselor and our lawyer stands up and he speaks and says, objection, my Lord. Heaven answers and says, objection sustained. Why? Because the price has been paid. Uh, and this is not the time for fear. This is not the time to believe in theories, but to understand that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has sent us one of his own kind, a comforter, who will not only comfort us in these times of need, but who will abide with us till this pandemic is over. And in the verse 17 of John's Gospel, chapter 14, Jesus says, He is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it sees him not, neither does the world know him. But you and I have come to know. You see, the background of Jesus speaking here was that it was time for him to go back to the Father. It was time for him to become a substitute, to lay down his life as a ransom for us. And he tells the apostles the importance of him going because if he does not leave, the comforter would not come. And that not only was it important for him to leave, but he was going to send as someone who was who would do exactly what he did. Jesus, when he walked on planet Earth, was confined only to the perimeters of Israel. But the comforter will be everywhere and at the same time. So Jesus was saying. In the coming centuries, there will be so much conflicting reports, but what you will need is the truth. And that the comforter, the paraclete that I'm sending to you is also the spirit of truth. In other words, you cannot be around truth and be deceived. Therefore, he, as the spirit of truth, is the one that you must rely on. And uh, Paul makes it quite clear to us that truth is also one of the weapons of our warfare. And in Ephesians chapter 6, and he says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Truth in this dispensation shall be a stability. If not, you'll be lost, you'll be confused, you'll be depressed. And in the midst of all these 
numerous theories that are on social media stand on the word of God that faileth not. All these fake stories will come and go, but the only thing that will endure forever is the word of God. So Jesus says, I will send you the comforter. In other words, he will be someone who will soothe us in a time of pain and grief. And for many who have lost loved ones through this pandemic, coronavirus, I pray that may God himself comfort you with the comfort of God. May the comforter strengthen those that are battling the disease now. And those that have been quarantined because of the coronavirus, I pray and I release the comforter that Jesus promised to be with you. May he ease your pain. May he soothe that pain. May he bring relief. May he console you and encourage you. And he's saying to you today that this also shall pass and that you will rise out of that bread out of that hospital bed. You are coming off that ventilator in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, the comforter is like one who lays down his life, who lays you down on a warm bed of safety. So let's look at three basic things from the passage that I read for us that the comforter does. First, he comforts us with God's assurance. Secondly, he comforts us with God's presence and thirdly he comforts us with God's guidance. Let's look at number one. He comforts us with God's own assurance and in the verse 16 Jesus says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. That is an assurance. The, the assurance here is that this comforter, this helper will abide with you forever. May, may God reveal this helper to you in the name of Jesus. Assurance that as I was with you, so will this comforter be with you. In other words, Jesus is saying you cannot do it alone. This comforter will be just like me. It's a promise because in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible makes it quite clear that it is not by power, it is not by mind but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Not, not only will he comfort us with his assurance, but he will, this assurance is an assurance of help. Look at verse 18. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In other words, he's saying, I will not leave you comfortless. I, I, I will not leave you as people without a mom and a dad. I, I, as a mom will tenderly hold a baby. So is the Lord saying he will do for us in this time of need. You will not walk alone. Blind Bartimaeus, when he heard that Jesus was passing by Jericho, the Bible declares that he shouted and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible tells us in Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, from verse 48, that the more he shouted, the more the people asked him to shut up. But the more they asked him to shut up, the more he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible tells us that Jesus stopped. You see, the, the, the issue is how the throng, the number of people that were following Jesus. Jesus was able to make out the voice of this blind man sitting on a corner. I want you to know that in the midst of this pandemic, as the church cries unto him, as your beloved are going through this challenge and you cry to him, he will hear your voice. And those same people who said to him, shut up, went back to him and said to him, be of good comfort, for he calleth you, the King James will say. And Jesus said to him, go thy way, for thy faith has made thee whole. Therefore we put our hearts together and we declare to the principalities and the forces of darkness, whatever spirit is behind the coronavirus, and we say that cease in the name of Jesus. 
and Jesus speaks and says, coronavirus be still. This also shall pass. It will surely come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray today that may our doctors and our nurses who are on the front line and are sacrificing their lives daily to battle this pandemic, this unknown sickness, may the divine protection of the living God be around them. May the comforting, soothing power of the Holy Spirit engulf them with the power and with the presence of God. May they know that Jesus is speaking in the midst of their sacrifice and he is in their boat. I pray that may the Lord continue to speedily heal our prayers. May the Lord speedily heal our prime minister. May all the government officials who are on the forefront of this pandemic and are helping our nation to battle this pandemic, those that have gone under with this virus, may the hand of the Lord touch and heal them. For the multitudes in Ghana who are on their sick beds and are battling this disease, in the name of Jesus, peace be still and may the hand of the Lord heal them. So do we pray for all those who are suffering here in the United Kingdom. May God have mercy on them. Jesus says, I will give you another comforter. You see, this comforter does not only come to assure us and also to comfort in his helping us, but the truth about him is that the comfort he gives us is a faithful assurance. And you see, love sometimes can prove unfaithful. And Shakespeare said, that, oh, sharper than a serpent's tooth is an unfaithful friend. How truth he is. There are those who will only stand with you when things are well. But the comforter, the Lord of Lords, says with everlasting love has he loved us. Not because of what you and I have done, but God demonstrated his love towards us in that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us a faithful assurance. No wonder David said in Psalm 37 verse 25 that I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed going about and begging for bread. As a comforter, he suits in time of grief. He relieves us of the affliction. He comes to encourage. He will relieve you of every worry and let your mental health be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus. May he come to you in a song. May he come to you in a word of encouragement. Remember that every setback is only a set up for God to bring you back. And that through this, you are coming back in the name of Jesus. The truth about life is that we will always have people around us who are unreasonable. They are those who kill mosquitoes with a sledgehammer. He will take a hammer when he sees a mosquito on your forehead and hit the mosquito and say, I killed it. But the damage that he has done. And there are people who are unsympathetic and they think that they are the judges at this time. And they will tell you that you are going through what you are going through because of your sin. Do not believe them. So the comforter comes to assure us, but he also comes to comfort us with the presence of God. And look at verse 16, the Bible says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. So in other words, Jesus is saying to us that not only is he coming to us with an assurance, but he is someone who is also coming to us with the presence of God. He will abide with us forever ever. Glory to God. Uh, the question is, what is God's message to us in these troubled times we are facing? It is very important that we understand that as a people, we have responsibilities to the government. And on that note, we have to be obedient to the lockdown. Secondly, we have a responsibility to the physicians who are helping us. We have to follow their instructions. 
And thirdly, we have a responsibility to our living God. We have to trust him. And in Psalm 103 verse 19, God speaks and he says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. What an assuring word. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. This means that he is in control. That his kingdom shall never come to an end. That, that all the powers of this world are being shaken. All powers will come and go. But of, the, of his kingdom, there is no beginning and there is no end. Forever it is established. That is why we can trust him. He knows why this pandemic has happened. He knows how long it will take. He knows all that is going to happen. The God who took his people to the Red Sea will take us through this war. These two shall come to pass. Our response must not be fear. Our response must be for us to know that this is a time to pray. This is a time to have confidence and boldness in our God. We'll, he will abide with you forever. We don't know the source of this virus, but we've heard so many theories, but we know the one who overrules the accusations of the enemy and sustains the objection. He is still in control. Our comforter is pleading on our behalf. He is exhorting us on our behalf. He is strengthening us on our behalf. And he does that till you and I get the victory. You see, beloved, today, social media has changed our world. The least challenge is on social media. And too many people, instead of living their lives in the Bible, are living their lives on social media. And all what social media is doing, as much as there are too many good aspects of social media, that what is it is doing at this time is that it is propounding too many theories of fear. It has become a war monger, a rumor monger, fear monger, and you and I have to be very careful. Too many things are being said on Facebook, on WhatsApp, WeChat, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Foursquare, Care, and TikTok. All what is going on are false theories. You see, unfortunately in this generation, and I want to speak directly to many young people, this is the time to understand that knowledge and wisdom will be your stability at these challenging times. I want to encourage you that this is the time to live in the Bible. This is the time to study God's work, God's word. This is the time to know him personally for yourself as a child of God. This is the time to personally seek him. Unfortunately, too many young people are committing suicide simply because they are unable to cope with the pressures of our world. But Jesus says that what we are seeing is only the beginning of the disasters that are to come. And Jesus made it quite clear that for the sake of the elect, the times will be shortened. So understand that regardless of what happens, God has you at heart. That is why he has sent you the comforter. Too many people ask the question, uh, are young people, so daddy, how, how were you people able to live in the past 40 and 50 years when there were no mobile phones, when there were no color, color TV, when there were no emails, when there were no uh, 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 test messages? Oh, you see, during our time, there were no color televisions. And in a community, in most of the communities, when we were growing up, uh, most of the time, only one person had a television. And it was black and white. And we watched our favorite shows through the window. And, and uh, they had to determine who would come and sit on the floor in the living room. It depended how 
well you were dressed but we found those days to be so exciting we found those days to, to be so joyful because in those days what we knew was that in his presence was fullness of joy we, we lived our lives according to the Bible. In those days, many of us did not even speak in tongues. But the quality of the Christian life at that time was super. And I believe that in the midst of all these challenges, this is the time to seek God again. To seek him afresh. In our time, there, were, there was no Facebook and Snapchat. But what we had were pen pal friends. But life was not only kind to us because we did not live our lives under pressure. So the comforter comes to comfort us with the assurance of God. He comforts us with his presence, but he also comforts us with his guidance. And in John's Gospel, chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus speaks and he says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but will speak what he hears. He will speak and he will tell you things that are to come. In other words, when the comforter comes, he will comfort us with his guidance. God's instruction to us through the Comforter as believers is very clear. He wants us to know that this is the time for us to let our lights shine so that men may see our good works and give glory to our Father who is in heaven. This is a time when God is instructing us to understand that we are ambassadors for Christ. And as it were, God is reconciling the world back to himself through us. If there is any time when our faith must be shared on the phone, on the social media, this is the time to let people know that God is in control, that the price has been paid, that Jesus loves them, that Jesus is the only one who knows everything about them and still loves them. This is the time when everybody needs a friend, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, and his name is Jesus. This is the time for you and I to share our faith and to let people know that regardless of their past, only Jesus has power to walk back into the corridors of their past and cleanse it with his blood and to give them a new life. The instruction he is giving to us is that we must understand that not only do we have influence in this world, and that what we bind on this earth is what heaven will bind, and that what we lose on this earth is what heaven will lose. In other words, the authority to stop and to release has been given unto us. And this is the instruction that God is giving to us. In that beautiful psalm of ours, Psalm 23 verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God did not promise we will not be through the valley. We will be walking through the valley. But the instruction that he has given to us that we should not be afraid because he is with us through the depth of that valley and that his rod and his staff will be comforting us. Isaiah 41 verse 10, he says, I'm your God and I will strengthen you. No weapon that the enemy will fashion against us shall prosper. Any mouth that is raised in judgment against us, we condemn it in the name of Jesus. For this is a heritage, those of us that are called by his name. Jesus assures us and tells us that my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. What you see, the instruction at this time is to focus our attention on the word of God and not to focus our attention on the things that are going on around us. This is the time for deep Bible study. This is the time for prayer. Again, this is the time for obedience. For if my people, and this is his instruction again, who are called by my name, 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God says, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. May the Lord heal our land. May Ghana be covered with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The question is, where are you spiritually in your relationship with God? Remember that regardless of where you are falling, if you confess your sins, 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me end by saying this, that the government and the World Health Organization, the governments of all the nations and the World Health Organization has given us three basic instructions. And just as God guides us, comforts us with his guidance. He wants us to obey the governments that he has set in place. Uh, uh, Romans 13, that they are there for our good and not to condemn or to destroy us. We are being told to wash our hands spiritually. What, what is the significance of that spiritually? Uh, understand that every instruction that God gives has a spiritual significance. Spiritually, this is a time for you and I to purify ourselves. This is the time for you and I to say that, Lord, search me and know me, try me and know my thoughts. And that if there is any wicked way in me, lead me in the way everlasting. This is a time for us to pray that our conscience is washed by the blood of Jesus. This is a time to sing and to say that, wash me, cleanse me by the blood that flowed on Calvary. This is a time for you and I to examine ourselves. This is the time for us to wash our minds of any thought that is impure. This is the time to ask God that created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is the time for you and I to know that spiritually, a broken and a contract heart, God will not despise. This is the time to lift holy hands unto him in worship and in praise. But we are also being told by our doctors to practice social distancing. Spiritually, this is a time for sanctification. This is a time for you and I to know that God has set us apart. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. And the, and the Bible says that come out from amongst them. We come out from amongst them by living lives that will cause the light that is in us to shine. And as that light shines, they see the good works of the Father that is in us and they give the glory to God. Why? They say that of a reality, this is a child of God. This is a time for sanctification. This is a time again to touch our world with the unsearchable riches of Christ. Joshua told the children of Israel in Joshua chapter 1, that sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. God will do wonders. And listen, after this virus, we will see the wonders that God will do. And as we are being asked to practice social distancing, this is also the time to know that we must set ourselves apart specifically for him. We are also being asked to stay at home. And significantly and spiritually, this is the time for families to bond together. You see, interestingly, for the first time in our world, all wives know where their husbands are. And guess where they are? They are at home. This is the time to bond with the family again. Remember that in the last plague, with which God plagued the people of Egypt, God made it very clear that the doorpost that he was going to strike the first sons of the children of Egypt dead. And what they were to do was for every family to kill a lamb and eat it together and use the blood of that lamb to mark their doorpost. And that in the night, as the angel of coronavirus, uh, as the angel of death passed, at that pass over, he will pass over their houses. The angel of coronavirus is passing by. And what our government 
is saying to us, and most importantly, significantly, what God is saying to us is that stay at home. And as you stay at home, not only are you not spreading this virus, but you are also protecting your family. Remember that when the children of Israel left Egypt, there was a remnant that went with them. Uh, the remnant were those who obeyed these instructions by staying at home. May the angel of coronavirus pass over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, this is the time to open your hearts to him. And maybe you are saying, Pastor Kingsley, I want my past to be forgiven. I want to become a Christian and I want to live my life for Christ. This is a time to live for him. And I want you to pray this very simple prayer with me. Say this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize that I am a sinner. I open the door of my heart to you. I repent of my sins and I invite Jesus into my heart as my personal Lord and my personal Savior. Your word says that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. With my mouth, Lord, I confess Jesus as Lord. In my heart, I declare that God raised him from the dead. Thank you for saving me. To you be the honor and the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and after he had given thanks he broke the bread and said take eat for this is my body broken for you so uh, as you break the bread as a family and as you eat together. You are remembering what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Jesus, who is the same yesterday, the same today, and forever the same. The Apostle Paul goes on to say that in the same manner also, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it a remembrance of me. So pass the bread around as a family. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that as your children have partaken of the bread which is the body of Christ and the cup which is the blood of Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on your children. Give to each one of them a living testimony. And let it be said, as your children partook of the bread and the cup today, their bodies have been restored and their healing has become total. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Let me also remind you, as you and thank all of you for so generously blessing your church last Sunday. God richly bless you for remembering your church. And as you and I know, uh, this is a time to continue to be faithful to our church. And you'll be seeing on the screen uh, how you are able to give to support your church. God bless you and keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Your going out and coming in shall be blessed. No calamity shall come now your dwelling. 
Coronavirus is not coming near your house. And those that have gone down with the virus, I declare in the name of Jesus that this is your week of total healing and restoration. Let's say the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. May your glory 